someone else is donning the cowl. Here's your look in the new McFarlane Toys. DC Multiverse, DC Future States, Batman. Tim Jace Fox, a strange son of billionaire Lucius Fox, returns to Gotham City after having disappeared for years. Following an attack on Arkham Asylum known as A-Day, the mayor of Gotham City allows a private law enforcement group known as the Magistrate to take over policing vigilantism in the city, cracking down on anyone wearing a mask. Soon after Bruce Wayne and Batman are nowhere to be seen and Gotham quickly goes from bad to worse, with the Magistrate ruling the city and the Dark Knight gone, Gotham needs a new hero. Enter Tim Fox, the next Batman. Plenty of time we'll be able to spend with Tim. First, though, of course, you guys will want to see just how tall this figure stands. That's what this black disc is. That's my brand new tape measure. Clickety click barb a trick right to the very top of Batman's pointed ears. The figure stands six and a half inches in height, or he's about 17 centimeters tall. Then, to bring in some other Batman figures for comparisons, this is what Tim Fox looks like next to the Bruce Wayne Dark Detective Batman, a figure we just recently had a look at. Thank you for those, by the way, that took the time to watch that video. In this case, Tim Fox is smaller than Bruce, but not by much. Bruce Wayne also seems to have a bigger build. Tim Fox is a little bit leaner of a Batman. We can also bring in another Batman. Now, this one is Bruce Wayne here on the other side. He's sort of been sandwiched on both sides by Bruce Wayne's. But the one to the right is the disappointing Hush Batman. It's not really disappointing other than just the fact that his black arms. That was a mishap, believe you me. Still think I want to pick up another one of these sets, but not one that I want to do online, because I would just probably run the risk of getting yet another Batman with still black arms. But if that figure does start showing up circulating here at local comic book stores, I'm going to start checking around, see if I can find a better Batman. I've heard that they started to circulate a Batman with corrected arms. Unfortunately, mine didn't have corrected arms. Some pretty standard stuff comes included with Tim Fox's Batman, like a trading card, like a display stand, swappable hands, and a batarang, no doubt. Figure, first of all, comes included with a display stand. One thing I did notice about the display stand was the sloppy approach that they did with the DC logo. Oh, right. Psss. In fact, it looks like it probably was done a second time, just to compare it with another one of the Batman figures. I think this was the one that came included with Dark Detective Batman, doesn't really matter. But just to show you that not only is the plastic a little bit lighter on this stand, you can see like the plastic seems to be changing a little bit on these stands, but definitely seems like it may be a second pass went around to print the DC logo down below. Somebody is commenting in the comment section right now. I can't believe this guy is so hung up on the DC logo stand. <laughs> really not, sir, that's commenting on that down below. I'm not married to this at all. I'm just going to casually date this stand and then from there just move on to another display stand. Uh, what's though interesting is, yeah, the press also seems to be printing these stands at varying thicknesses. So the one that has the sloppier DC logo is actually just a little bit thicker than the one that came included with Dark Detective Batman. Again, am I hung up on this? I'm really not. I'm going to put that to the side. Uh, figure also comes included with a trading card. And once again, figure photography has been slightly distorted as this Batman does have glowing eyes. Full disclosure, this Batman figure does not have glowing eyes. Oh, somebody says in the background. Oh, indeed. Uh, yeah, again, I don't mind the fact that they are using photos of the figure, but then don't go in there and start distorting things. Because again, like looking at that, I would assume the figure has glowing eyes. I would be incorrect, along with the other four people that thought the same. Oh, you did as well? It's just only the four of us. On the back, it does give us the real name of Timothy Jace Fox with a read-up that you can read for yourself. Or, I did also do all the legwork for you. It's the same read-up I did at the very beginning of this video. So if you'd just like to hear my voice reading all the paragraphs that are on the back of the card, it's been done. Covered that already. You're welcome. And put that to the side. Figure also comes included with a batarang. This batarang does look like something I would expect Batgirl to have. I do like the gold that they use, and they add actually like little spine lines here. Not spine lines, lines, lines in the sculpting. It's soft plastic, but not super soft. It's still pretty thick, mind you. Although it seems a little bit thinner than some of the other batarangs we've gotten from Batman before. 
One good thing is that you don't have to swap out any one of his hands in order for him to hold the Batarang. He's already got equipped. First of all, we're going to go ahead and pick the figure up. And you'll see right away, like he does have two gripping hands. But once again, it almost seems as if they've given him trigger firing hands for a grapple gun or something else that he never came included with in the first place. Still, though, you can take the Batarang and wedge it in between his fingers and his palm get it far enough in there that it's not going to fall onto the floor and then we have to pause the video i have to go looking around on the floor where is it where is it where is it oh it's right there the cat was about to grab it if you get it far enough in not that i want to be jinxing the matter but it seems to be staying pretty good in his hands i do like the look of the battering it's not quite no the same gold that they used for the belt but i do like the idea that they gave us a metallic battering that actually isn't super thick either maybe they're fixing the problems with that Putting the figure back down here for a second, the figure also comes included with some gripping hands. Well, punching hands more so. These hands are good for, again, sucker punching somebody. I don't know who. Some, Hopefully not some citizen. Somebody from the magistrate, I would hope, if anything. Uh, I'm probably not going to even swap these out. I mean, if you wanted to, if you wanted to see what it looks like, I'll do that at least for the sake of this review. You just pop that off. And then we'll just go ahead and find, making sure that we'll, you've got the proper hand. Uh, one thing I guess it was good to show you guys in the video is when you are putting the hands in, there's a flap of the front of his glove that actually covers over the peg. So when you are replacing it, of course, you're going to have that flap. You're just going to have to tuck the hand underneath the flap and you're good to go. Those are all the accessories. We'll kind of slide those all over. Getting a closer look now at future state, Tim Fox. I want to say like, I don't know why I want to say Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows, I think, is an actor, isn't he? Tim Fox, Batman, from future state. A nice looking Batman, I have to say. Like this particular Batman, one thing that's notable about it is the fact that you can see his mouth guard is covering over the bottom half of his face. That's to tell you, well, that's to show you that you don't know who's underneath the mask. Not that you could really tell who was underneath the mask for Bruce before, but at least this one does have a fully concealed face. You got to imagine how hard that would be to breathe underneath. Like costumes for Batman, we already know by now, get pretty hot, pretty hot and sweaty. You imagine now he doesn't even have the means to breathe. I got to imagine like there's got to be some breathing apparatus underneath that face mask. If not for that, how would Batman be able to even breathe? That would be a sweaty face pretty sweaty tim after he takes his costuming off i do like the look of the suit though and it doesn't bother me at all the fact he does have a covering mouth guard if you look at this just approaching this on a store peg you probably will think for yourself i don't know if they've actually finished batman's lower face they certainly haven't gone in there and painted it that's actually the way his mask is supposed to look in the comics but yes as already fully disclosed he does not have glowing eyes he only has white painted and eyes the black continues on down. Uh, he has a cape that connects right to it, but actually just before it connects, there's a part to the shoulder area that actually is sculpted to the top of the cape. So it's actually not just a seamless cape that goes right tucked into the front of his shoulders. He actually does have more of an armor here in this case. He does have these shoulder pads, for example, that are the continued color of the black. Uh, one thing I'll talk more about when we talk about the articulation on the figure is like these shoulder pads are guilty for always getting caught and hung up in the little sections here of his suit. When you are rotating it, it'll either get caught underneath here or it'll get caught underneath here. Or even if you're trying to move it forward, it's going to get tucked underneath here. These shoulder pads are the pits. Things, though, I do like about the figure is I do like the changed out bat emblem that he has. Instead of actually outlining it in yellow, as we've seen with the Rebirth Batman, and instead of actually making an oval shape in yellow, they've actually only just put a few lines of yellow, giving you the suggestion of the, the oval sort of bat logo that he has. It has, sort of has a more tech look to it. I do really like the look of that bat emblem quite a lot. The use of this particular gray that they also went with is something I'm really quite happy with. I kind of has almost a bluish blue based gray coloring look to it. The whole front of his armor essentially is just like plating over top uh, will be like his suit underneath. If you look at actually where you flip the cape up, he doesn't have any paint on the back side of it. I would have to go back and check the source material, whether that is the case and whether they actually weren't supposed to paint the back of it. Because it does for a second when you're looking at it, you really do think that the whole back section was just unfinished by the painters. And it really is only just the front section that actually does get the gray. He does have gray in his arms. Now that's just the plastic. And then he does have like the gauntlets over top of that. That's traditional Batman as well. So they haven't changed too much there. Long spikes that stick out from his forearms. These are softer plastics, so you don't have to worry as much about these poking you in the eye. And a decent, de a decently detailed utility belt as well. I really like the look of this one. Uh, only a few little pockets. 
and a few sections where I suppose he probably could hold some gas capsules. And he doesn't have any actual pockets on the back of his utility belt either. There is, again, there's these areas where you have the black plastic, and then you've got that darker kind of blue-based gray here on the front of it. Like I said, it's a really nice, interesting-looking bat suit. It's not something that I would maybe expect to see Batman, Bruce Wayne Batman have. But if you're going to be giving us a different type of Batman, a person that's different underneath the cowl, I actually fully embrace this coloring of suit. The, like, the suit looks really good. The only thing I would really be critical about when it comes to this figure is, first of all, his shoulder pads. We'll talk more about again when we look at the articulation. They're just always a pain in the you-know-what. They'll either get stuck, well... We've already talked about that. Uh, one thing also I noticed about this particular Batman, and I don't know why I have to draw your attention to this, is that he seems really small here. Like where his legs actually go up, and then you deal with where his waist should be, I feel he's got a really small, narrow lower torso. That's all you guys are going to be seeing now. Uh, that's the only thing I would say is a little jarring on this Batman. Like it seems it almost throws like his proportions off a little bit from the top torso because the top torso seems like long, but then when you're coping with legs that go this far up and such a narrow lower waistline, it, it does look a little off proportion to me. Maybe it's just me. As for the articulation on the figure, we're going to start things with his head sculpt. Head rotates all the way around. It's your regular standard articulation that usually is the case with all these multiverse figures. Head does look down pretty good, actually. It does also rock back and forth pretty good, actually, until you get to the arms. And like I said, like the arms, it isn't so much these parts of his arms, it's these shoulder pads. When you are rotating his arms, you'll see, first of all, they're using softer plastic, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but it's a problem when you're trying to rotate his arms because they're going to get caught under here, under here, I know, cover the territory already. And even like moving the arms out, every single time I want to bring his arms beyond the point of a 45, I have to take then his shoulder pads and just bring them up just so he actually can clear his cape. Again, you're just going to have to bring this up. There we go. See? See what I mean? I wasn't crazy. You have to bring this, you have to almost peel this up every single, every single time. I don't know if I could fault McFarlane's team for actually coming across, well, making a figure that has the problems in the shoulder pads, because that's the way he's designed in the comics. I don't know what else they could have done differently. It's not as if they could have pegged the part of the shoulder pad up here, because you probably would have the same problem if you're trying to rotate the arms. But if you are rotating them, you're always going to be going in there with tweezers, your fingers or something, always lifting up the shoulder pads. They always are getting in the way. He does have a bicep swivel. The figure does have a double hinge on the elbow. And the figure has a swivel in his wrist. Whatever hands you decide to display him with. Upper torso is on a ball joint. Lower torso underneath his mustard utility belt is also on a ball joint. And then avoiding the idea that yeah, he's not going to draw too much more attention to the fact he's got a very small, small lower torso. But the figure does have leg splits. The legs don't bend as much as I would hope. I mean, especially when you, when it comes to moving the legs forward, you really feel like there's a lot of plastic, especially maybe like right here that just gets in the way. I guess you really don't need it necessarily to go beyond this point, but yeah, to rotate the legs, there's always something due to the, the way his suits designed that's getting in the way of the matter of just trying to get him to rotate. This figure also doesn't have, it seems any swiveling at the top of his thigh. Maybe just because everything is such close quarters here, he just can't move. Like, he just can't have a swivel in the thigh, which is okay. I mean, if you don't... It wouldn't be so bad if they could have put a swivel cut right here in his thigh. Now, I understand that that would have broken up the sculpt of his lower leg, but at least then you'd be able to rotate his leg out. Because if you can't do it up here, I would hope at least you could do it right here. And he doesn't have a swivel cut anywhere in his thigh. Strange. Batman always has or any of the multiverse figures generally have a cut right here in the thigh that allows you to swivel it. And you can't do that with this Batman. Again, they probably just did this to keep the mold intact, but I would have sacrificed it just a little bit if you could actually have been able to swivel. It's where he's the most limited is this part of the figure's body. The figure has a double hinge on the knee. That's no problems there. He has no lower leg swiveling, but the figure does have articulation in the ankle. You can move it back and forth this way. You can move it back and forth this way. And yes, Tim Fox, not Tim Meadows, it's a different Tim altogether. It does actually have a hinge joint at the bottoms of his feet, or the ends of his feet. Overall, like, design-wise, it's a nice-looking Batman. He does have problems more contributed, I think, to the way the figure's the costume is designed in the comics. Because he does have to have those shoulder pads at the tops of his arms, those are going to get in the way. 
And then because they, I guess, they wanted to keep the, the scene consistent and kind of more streamlined in his lower legs, for some reason or another, they just cut the swivel thigh right out. I mean, just to, again, bring in Dark Detective Batman, he had swiveling cuts in his thighs. And just to, again, bring in, well, actually, this is a bad example, but Hush Batman didn't have the swivel cut in his thigh, but at least he had more swivelage. Is that a word? We're going to go with that. He had at least more swivelage at the tops of his thigh. Batman doesn't have it. He doesn't have this, and he doesn't have this. What he gets instead is very limited leg articulation. If that's not something that bothers you at all, then I think, yes, it's still a nice-looking figure. A different Batman, certainly, than what we traditionally get with a Bruce Wayne Batman. But I like the look of Tim Fox Batman. I'm not liking really as much the, the limitations to his articulation, but overall, it's a nice-looking figure nonetheless. You could say that the Batman from DC Future State, his legs are in a bit of a dire state. Sorry, I had to. This figure, unfortunately, doesn't have a swivel cut anywhere on the thigh. That's usually something that always goes along with any one of these DC multiverse figures, and yet, for one reason or another, this Batman has been omitted it. It's not the case only that this is solely the figure that's not had the swivel cuts. In fact, there's been a couple of Batman figures. The one just recently, we had a look at the Hush, for example, I showed you in this review, doesn't have a swivel cut. But what he does have is a more, a much more clearance at the tops of his thighs that you can still get away with the swiveling. It's just swiveling a little further up the, up the leg. This figure is limited in both of those categories. Not only does he have no, no swivel cuts in his legs, but he doesn't also have the means to swivel at the tops of his thighs. Now, that's not a deal breaker at all, but it's certainly something that's strange when you get so used to seeing these figures here, and I'm reviewing these figures on a regular basis, you sort of, after a while, know the blueprint, the way these figures are designed. Just, just not to have a figure that has neither of these at your disposal seems a bit strange to me. And I'd be curious as to why McFarlane's toys left out that swivel cut. Is it a deal breaker? Not at all. It still makes for a nice looking Batman. I don't know if this is the Batman that everybody's going to be picking up. Once again, it goes back to the feelings that I have of McFarlane's team's always really going with source material and following a comic run. If you've never re read any of the future state from DC Comics, you may not be any bit interested to pick up this figure for yourself. In fact, jokingly, I said in this review, but if you are just a casual Batman fan walking along the peg sh sections of the stores, you may look at this Batman and think right away, wait a minute, they didn't finish his mouth. Not only did they not sculpt the mouth, but they didn't even paint it in. What a lazy company. Well, it's the way he's supposed to look. But again, a casual collector of Batman may not know that. They just jokingly may think that Batman never got painted properly in the factory. This figure at least comes included with a display stand, as traditional comes includes with all the figures. It comes also included with some swappable hands. I'm really never going to be using those. Even though I did putting the sucker punching hand, at least on the one side, I changed it back immediately so it can hold that really nice looking batarang. Batarang doesn't match his utility belt. That's not a deal breaker for me. It's just a nice looking batarang. And it's one of the better batarangs we've gotten. It doesn't look like some big, thick throwing frisbee. It's a little bit thinner, at least. Nice looking Batman cosmetically. He has some problems when it comes to moving his joints around his shoulders and his legs, but overall I'm happy with the look of this Batman and looking forward to putting him on display along with the dark detective Batman we've already had a look at earlier. What do you guys think of future state Batman, specifically Tim Fox Batman? Let me know down below in the comments section. If you guys are also interested to pick this one up for yourself and haven't had any luck, I did actually order this one over on Entertainment Earth's website, to which I'll provide the link down below. Entertainment Earth seems to be my go-to as of late when it comes to an online buying for buying a lot of the figures that you've been seeing here lately here on this channel. One thing I really like about Entertainment Earth is that they're fast on shipping. If you have the problems, and I have certainly had the problems, believe you me, with other websites in the past, you order something and then it seems to take for weeks not just to ship to you, but sometimes it takes a week just for the company to actually send it out. I found out later that some online sites actually only have a pickup one per week. So if you miss that pickup by one day, you have to wait the entire week, the entire week for the following week to come around for them to actually have the pickups. Entertainment Earth seems to be picking up, I'm guessing, every single day because I order this one. And then within about a week, this was already at my doorstep. So if you guys are interested and would like to get this one for yourself, I'll provide the link down below to Entertainment Earth where you can order one for yourself. Uh, while you're certainly also down there and you're enjoying the content that you guys have been seeing as of late here and covering off a lot of DC multiverse figures as of late, but if you haven't already done so and would like to follow along the exploits here of this humbled reviewer behind the camera, make sure that you're hitting the subscribe button down below that you're turning as well the notification on for the bells. So I know, I know always is something that us content creators are always driving into you guys. 
hit that bell notification, hit that bell notification. It's actually there for a reason. I, I don't understand really the reasoning why YouTube put it there in the first place, but I have heard from other people that are viewing things on this channel. They didn't even know that a new video was here on the channel until they decided to look it up manually. That is a crime. Well, not literally, but it's it's a crime in the sense that you, some of you viewing audience out there don't even know when new videos are popping up here on this channel. So hitting the bell notification not only benefits you so that you're getting those notifications, but it also benefits this channel and helps it grow with the algorithm. Uh, if you guys are interested, and like I said, if you join the content, hit the subscribe, hit the bell notification, and yes, make sure that you're coming back here on a regular basis because while we have wrapped up the review for the Tim Fox Batman, there will be more DC Multiverse reviews coming your way. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.